What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a very long time, but we're back, fresh, better than before, and hopefully you guys are doing all right as well. So anyways, in this video, we're gonna be talking about my commonly asked question that I always get from students is, should I pick computer science for A-level? Which my answer would be, of course, why not? But obviously this video wouldn't be that long if the simple answer was yes. Hopefully by the end of the video, I've convinced you that picking computer science is the right choice. Before we get started, if this is the first time you're seeing my face on your screen, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like the video, make sure you share it with all your friends. It'll really help support the channel and help me create more and better resources for you guys. So the most commonly asked question that I always get from students is that, do I need GCSE computer science in order to do A-level? My answer to that would be, firstly, check with your school the entry requirements for the subject. So most schools that I know of, you need a minimum of grade six or above in either GCSE computer science or GCSE maths. These two subjects, you need at least above grade six. They say six, but maybe they've changed it to seven, who knows? So make sure you double check with your school and let me give you a quick warning. So basically, if you're getting a grade six right now for your GCSE computer science, that should be a clear indication that you need to be working 10 times harder than students that have got grade eights and nines. This should be a clear indication that you shouldn't waste your time in the summer and instead get cracking on with the weak areas that you feel that you need uh, to put your work in. So for example, if you struggle with paper two, paper two is the coding aspect. You need to get better at coding. The best ways to get better at coding is by going on YouTube. Go and select one of them. I'll have a few in the description box, but you need to use your own initiative and get better at coding. And the best way to practice is by watching these videos. And usually in these videos, they'll ask you to do some coding, which you need to pause the video and have a go at yourself. So for example, they might be asking you to create a calculator app or for example, maybe a snake game. You need to be actively learning and project-based learning is the best learning in my opinion for coding. If you're someone that's not willing to put the hard work required to do well at A-level GCSE, then do everyone a favor and just don't pick it. Because at the end of the day, computer science is a competitive sport, which you need to be working hard to get the best grades possible. Firstly, if you've never coded before in your life, I need you guys to use this summer and learn coding. Python is the best language to learn because it's used everywhere. It's used for most tasks, most important tasks anyway. So learn Python in the summer because when it comes to end of year 12, you're gonna be asked to do a programming project which is 20% of your course. Afterwards, I basically need you guys to go on the website and see that there's topic-wise notes and topic-wise exam questions and answers to those exam questions. I don't need you guys to relearn it, but I need you guys to actually be familiar with the style that you get taught. Because again, you haven't done it for GCSE, so you don't know what type of questions come up, what you learn, the syllabus. The summer should be the time that you learn what is required of you A-level computer science. The next big question students always have is that why should I pick A-level computer science? Well, my answer to that question would be in three main brackets. The first bracket is that you absolutely love coding and computer science. So if you like co computer science, then you should definitely pick A-level computer. That, that's common sense, but you should always pick a subject that you love. There's no point wasting time behind a subject that you don't, don't like. If you find that when you're doing the homework and you're doing the task that you like it and, and time's flying really quickly, then this is the right subject for you. The second reason why most students pick computer science is because it helps them with the degree in the future. So if that's one of you, that's a valid point. However, you need to bear in mind that you're not, you're not just picking computer science for the sake of picking it. You need to actually be actively learning, actively engaging in the activities and learning. One thing that I do want to add that not a lot of teachers um, explain or, or tell is that you need to be powerful in maths. You should be picking A-level maths with A-level computer science because they are both required to get into the top universities. For example, Russell Group, they require A-level maths and A-level computer science. And if you want to go really high, 
to an even good university, you need to be picking A-level further maths as well. A-level maths, A-level computer science, A-level further maths is the best trio if you want to go to Oxford or Cambridge. Now, the next big question that students often have is what is included in the A-level computer science specification? Well, there are two papers, paper one, paper two. It's very, very similar to GCSE. You should be familiar with it. Paper one is theoretical side. Paper two is practical side. What I mean by this is that paper one has topics, for example, CPU topics, database topics, network topics. On the screen, you should see left side for the GCSE specification, right side for the A-level specification. You can clearly see the differences. Again, if you want an in-detail video of what you need to learn, what you need to um, know to get a better head start, let me know and I'll create that for you. Again, calculators are not allowed in any of these papers. These papers are out of 140 marks each. So that's a total of 280 and that is worth 80% of your A-level course. However, the next 20% comes from the programming project. This is any project that you want you need to create it using um, one of the programming languages that OCR recommend. This project typically starts the end of year 12 and between that summer you need to be preparing for that project and it ends in April just before when the exam starts. So here is the lesson structure. In year one you typically be covering these topics. Web technologies you need to learn HTML and CSS and JavaScript. These three, I'd, I'd make sure that you learn this summer. In year two, there are less subjects because you need to be focusing on the programming project. Something that I'd like to add is that teaching style is very different compared to what you're used to with GCSE. GCSE, you'd be spoon fed everything with um, the teachers. They'll tell you to do this. They'll give you worksheets. They'll tell you to do this, that, and the other. But for A-level, you need to become more and more independent and start learning yourself. Usually you have independent study sessions in school. You should not be wasting the time and playing games. You should be studying ahead. One thing is timing is very poor in, in typical um, A-level computer science course. Typically teachers can't teach and the course content is so much that they don't have time to finish it by the end of the, the year. And they basically skim read the topics. So this is where you need to be going home and checking what do I know, what do I not know and spending time um, accordingly. The teachers aren't going to come home and tell you do this question, do this subject, I haven't done this, so on. So make sure you're using your own initiative. You need to be on top of things from day one. Don't procrastinate and keep um, saying oh I'll do it later, I'll do it later. No, do it now and be sure to use the summer wisely. Fair, you need a break, obviously. I mean, you did your GCSEs just now, but you also need to be preparing ahead. It's not over yet. You still have A-level and after A-level, you still have university. The important factor is that you need to keep working hard and achieving the best that you can. So if you found this video useful, be sure to like, subscribe and so on. If there's anything that I've missed, be sure to write it down in the comment section. If you're going to be doing A-level computer science, I suggest that you subscribe right now. And again, I'll be going over much more detailed topics in the future. Anyways, good luck for results day. Hopefully you get the grades that you deserve and hopefully you have a great summer break and I'll see you later.